Right, so here I am on Mr. Chippy's bench with part two of the HMV Stereo Master um, 23301, I think we decided it was, which is the mono version of the 2330 because it doesn't have the decoder which would plug into the socket provided for a decoder which has a blanking place. It's a B9A. So probably mentioned on the previous one, the previous version, the 2320A was it? Anyway, the previous version was only a mono radio whereas this one was upgradable. So we've got all the capacitors out here. Yeah, all these big ones are just being replaced by these little ones. These are a better than. That's on order. That's 4000, obviously we're going to be doing 4700. Um, and I've ordered that on fatness so that it fits the P-clip rather than anything else. I think that's 35 volt rated and um, it'll be 63 volt rated for what we're putting in. So where shall we start? So clearly that's had work before. I'll tell you what, we'll start on the tuner. If I get no joy, we'll start by clipping the uh, the earth off each of those, which is the screen, it's not needed. Um, is that the right nut runner? Mm, no, that's the too big nut runner. Is that the right nut runner? So I do have the service sheet in front of me. It was on front of me, but goodness knows where it is now. So the electrolytics on this board, we've got these three. So I'm going to start by doing those. And this is for the radio tuner. Not enough wire to kind of go underneath that, so I'll pause the video. Okay, so we've now changed the ones in the radio tuner. They're 40, 470, 10 and 10. That was, let's have a look what's come out. That was a Callins one, 400 at 18 volts. So we've put in 35 volts. And all the capacitors which we're putting in, apart from that one which is a special order item, they are all uh, Nikicons. So let's see what the ESR meter has to say about this 400 microfarad capacitor. It's probably the only working one in it. 530, 40 ohms, that doesn't look right. I'd have to get my lookup table. 12 greater than 40 ohms eleven greater than 40 ohms anyway whether they're working or not out they've come so the next board I'm going to do will be the power supply board there's just a two on there whilst this comes into stock we'll still be operate we'll still run this up but I'll just be aware there may be a hum because of that So on this version we can actually get to it without taking the board out. 
Okay, so I've done the two on this board, so taken out 100 microfarads at 32 volts and I've replaced it with 100 at 35. These are all 105 degree rated, not that they need to be in this type of product, but it's what we buy in. And the little 4.4 microfarad one we've replaced for 4.7 and that's a Callins, that's TCC which was the Telegraph Condenser Company wasn't it? So we'll test those two. So these are the power supply ones. This big one is cracked, but does that mean anything? Yeah, quite a lot, because it says it's 180 microfarads, which is well out of spec. Five point six at six ohms. I'll tell you what, we'll just out of it because we're going to power it up with this in. We'll just make sure that's not got any charge in it. I know it's still in circuit, but let's just see if we can get a reading. Yeah, I mean that's that's probably all right to be honest, but it's going to be changed. Point is, it's uh, fifty years old, isn't it? So next, we'll have to take this board out. I've kind of left the hardest one to do till last, which isn't good practice. You can see how that one's got all, all its work showing. So I'm hoping we've just got in, probably got enough. If I kind of have this like that, we should be able to prop it up and uh, and dangle it accordingly. So we'll do that. Okay, so I've done those. Just got that one to do, which is done from the top side on this model. Uh, we cut the speakers off. Gives us a bit of wire to solder the bench speakers to. That's mains. Um, let's just have a look at what we've taken out. There's those two which had previously been replaced. I would think these are 70s. Is there a date code? Again, these are TCC, but much later than the other types. Let's put that in a position where you can see it. So what's that so supposed to be? 750 microfarads. We've put 820 microfarads in. Yeah, that still works. So we can bin that. It's had a different speaker as you probably saw in the first part. Uh, that's well out of spec. And I expect it blew a speaker when one of those original capacitors failed. I uh, don't need to check that because it's coming out anyway. So the 400s we've replaced with 470, they were 18 volt rated. And I'm sure there's some gunk coming out of the bottom of one of these. 620, I don't think so. Six hundred and eighty. No, thank you. We've already tested those. So the one which has lost its uh, casing, it's three hundred and thirty. We've put in yeah, five hundred and fifty. Again, well out. I often find capacitors read high when they're knackered. So that should be. 75 and it's 90. There's 100 in there, that's 2.2 and it is 2.2, that works alright. That should be 100 and it's about there. So 
2.8 instead of 2.6 so yeah so those smaller ones seem to be more or less okay but they all get changed anyway I once bought a 2400 uh, stereo mouse which is a record player only one and it uses a, those of you familiar it uses two amplifier modules and of course it doesn't have the radio uh, by the way the phono preamp on this just side tracking is on a subboard I'm absolutely sure it is um, oh well it must be this model it's built in on then <laughs> okay it's call me a liar where's the pickup go to? the pickup goes in there yeah it goes in yeah so it doesn't have a separate preamp it's, it's all built in right uh, so back to what I was telling you so we bought this 2440 it was quite a long way away like 200 miles away and Mr Chippy went to collect it and brought it back here I thought well what we're going to do we'll just see what happens this is a soul that's working of course uh, I just thought you see what happens we'll put it on put a record on and just put the record on repeat and after 35 minutes the amplifier blew up so there you go and that's why we don't risk it we don't power them up these transistors are so hard to come by um, it's AD, these aren't so that bad AD161 and AD162 and I've got those in stock in quantity but um, some of the others are scary so I think next time we put the camera on I'll have done that and we'll be powering it up okay well <clears throat> it's sat here playing now, is it playing the cassette tape yes it is so let's put those uh, back need to do the <coughs> <coughs> Right, so we just need to change this pilot lamp. I'm going to turn the power off. Speakers, we've got um, disco speakers under the bench, which are 8 ohms. I'm not going to be too stupid with this because it's 10 ohms it's looking for. Just check this bulb is the same as what we're expecting. Twenty four volt. Yep. So we'll put the these are RS one oh six three four one. It's supposed to be tubular bulbs and these are then we'll check the power supply. Yeah that looks right. So I'll go and get the service information and we'll check the power supply setup. In the meantime, we'll just show you radio. We get lousy reception here. with the AFC right so that's that we'll put the it's over to tape whichever which one that is press play that one So there we go on tape. So we're plugged in through the DIN socket, which you can of course record from as well as play back in stereo. Remember that these have uh, 
this three and a half mil jack socket is mono. It's intended to plug an HMV transistor radio in there, which had a output socket at um, line level. It's not expecting loudspeaker level. Just bear that in mind. It's not something you plug your Walkman into. It's mono and it's expecting line level. Right, that said, we will get the service information and get the power supply set up to make sure it's doing, I think it's 30 volts, we'll just check that. And it's critical because the, um, the radio tuner is very cap electronic tuning. It's one of the first products to do that. And what has really surprised me is that it works. And most of the time, not only has one transistor failed, but all of them have failed. Not so with this. So it's a 25 volt supply rail. So we're going to test between the reservoir capacity, capacitor positive, and the output of the power supply negative. Remember this is PNP, so chassis positive. So we will go on to there and on to there and we've got 24.54 so I'm not going to touch that, it's supposed to be 25 volts and I'd rather it be low than high so that's it, we're done to be honest the fact that the tuner's Actually, I've not had to tune it in apart from a bit of fine tune. It's incredible, it's on the same transmitter. So, go back to it. Right. I'm not going to mess with the tuning. It's, inc it's just an, an amazing that that radio works. And then we'll have it on, I'm going to have it on tape on soap for a bit. Oh, and if we go to Phono, we've got left channel, left, right, left, right. And I can tell they're the same volume. Oh, right, so the next part we'll be putting it back in the case, finishing it off and just doing fine alignment on the turntable. Bit concerned about the speakers because one of them's been changed in the past and it, is that going to be out of balance? Does it need both replacing because of that? So we'll see what it sounds like and then I'll discuss it with the customer. So there we go, all the capacitors changed. Um, with regard to the big reservoir capacitor there, I've had to drill an extra hole in the peak clip. I got the widest one I could and um, this is 4,500 at 35 and this is 4,700 at 63 volts to get it that big because a modern capacitor this size, um, it, it, this, this capacity is so much smaller. That was quite expensive uh, and that was a special order item. So there we go, there's some unusual values uh, and uh, it's like I've put 820 in for 750, you know, things like that. So there we are. New lamp, we're done. See you in part three.